A disturbance at a Gehring home turns violent Monday night, resulting in the homeowner shooting a 39-year-old male in the chest. KNEB.TV News starts right now. From your trusted source for news in western Nebraska and eastern Wyoming, this is KNEB.TV News. Presented by Platte Valley Companies, premier provider of financial services. Hello, I'm Ryan Murphy. This is KNEB.TV News, powered by Platte Valley Companies. Thanks for joining me. In our top story, a Garing man has been arrested for second-degree assault after allegedly shooting a 39-year-old man in the chest during a Monday night disturbance. 67-year-old Eldon Anthony has been arrested in connection with the shooting at his Garing residence. Garing police were dispatched to the 2300 block of 17th Street after receiving a report that a male had been shot. Captain Jason Rogers says an argument between the two had transpired and Anthony fired a single shot into the man's upper torso. The victim was transported to Regional West and this morning was listed in fair condition. Anthony was taken into custody and booked into the Scottsbluff County Detention Center on a single charge of second degree assault. Staying in Garing as an early morning house fire displaces a family of four. Chief Nathan Flowers says firefighters were dispatched to a home in the 1900 block of 4th Street around 315 this morning. And when they arrived, they saw flames and smoke coming out of the attic. He says it did take a little extra time to gain access to the home due to visi visibility and weather concerns. But once inside, they were able to knock down the fire in about 20 minutes. Two adults and two children were able to escape the home safely and firefighter ministry assisted them with their immediate needs. Flower says crews braved sub-zero temperatures until about 6 a.m., mopping up the fire and making sure there were no more hot spots. I think we have 14 Gearing firefighters here on scene. We're doing a great job. Uh, they're able to identify kind of where to go in this house, and, and it's frigid, it's cold. Yeah, we're, we're struggling with some ice and some different things breaking down, but uh, we're, we're getting the job done. The cause of the fire is to believe to be electrical in nature, but the fire department has turned the investigation over to the state fire marshal. Well, coming up after the break, cold start to start the morning, but things warmed up nicely as the day progressed. Bill Boyer's in with your comprehensive weather forecast right after this on KNEB.TV News. At Platte Valley Bank, we understand that you have a busy life, and that means you don't always have time to come to the bank. That's why we offer user-friendly online and mobile banking with features such as iPay, recurring transfers, and mobile deposit. So you can bank how you want, when you want to. Whether you prefer to bank in person, over the phone, or online, Platte Valley Bank makes it easy to take care of your finances. This chair is way too big. It's perfect for us. This one's tiny. That's cause it's mine. Hey, this chair is just right. This bed is way too hard. It's perfect for me. This bed is way too soft. Ah, just what I needed. This bed is just right. So come on over to Leaves Heads. Sure, you can get a premium steak at a steakhouse. No surprise there. But real petite filet steak sandwiches at an Arby's house? Surprise there. Arby's, we have the meat. This is KNEB.TV weather from the Arby's Weather Center. Arby's, we have the meat. Well, we're going to be dealing with partly cloudy skies as we go through the evening hours. Temps are going to fall down. Notice that's just in the 30s, though. That's not down into the single digits and uh, even below zero where we were this morning. Very cold conditions out there. So not as cold tonight, that's the good news. It's gonna be breezy, a little cooler tomorrow, but temper that, it's not gonna be much colder, just a little cooler. Really the rest of the weekend nice, uh, rest of the week nice, and the weekend coming up as well. Yesterday we hit zero, that was yesterday morning, after a high yesterday of just 21. So very, very cold. We tumbled even lower than that this morning. We'll show you that here in a moment. There's those extra 500 of an inch of moisture I told you about. 18 and three quarters for the year. We really started to add up. Well, here's where we were for low temperatures this morning. Burr. Well, that's clearly wrong. <laughs> 51 in Wheatland. Uh, no. 17 is right in uh, Cheyenne, but five below. Look at how this cold air settled right in here to the North Platte River Valley. Three below in Scotts Bluff. Nine below in Alliance. One above in Ogallala. Six in Kimball, 
four in Sydney, four in Chadron, seven in Gordon. So very cold air here across the eastern portions of the Panhandle. We've replaced that uh, with temps well into the 40s right now, 30 in uh, Hastings, that colder air here in the eastern half of the state. We're not bad in our area, 40 over in Laramie, 43 up in Casper, upper 30s and low 40s here across our region. Winds are light, a little stronger winds here in eastern portions of Wyoming, dropping those wind chills down a little bit. Nothing to worry about here on Futurecast for tonight. A few clouds early. We will clear out late tonight, uh, start to clear out a little bit. There's a few showers, sprinkles, maybe flurries trying to form along that frontal system. 29 in Valentine, 32 Scotts Bluff, Lusk, 38 over in Cheyenne tonight. So that's 25, 30 degrees or more warmer than where we were this morning. Here's those clouds off and on tomorrow. Really going to be just a partly cloudy day. More of the clouds and unsettled weather just off to our east. A few clouds try to sneak back in here tomorrow night wrapping around that low pressure system, but we don't have enough really to squeeze out any moisture out of it. And other than a sprinkle or a flurry, that's going to be about it and temper those temperatures back down five to 10 degrees tomorrow uh, for highs from where they were today. So 32 tonight, clouds early, clearing or late, not as cold. Tomorrow, 47 in breezy conditions. So it will be a bit breezy, 15 to 25, could see some gusts 35 to 40, but I'm excited to show you the seven day forecast here. You ready? Here it comes. Look at this, highs in the 50s on Thursday, maybe even cracking 60 on Friday. Bit cooler on Saturday in the low 50s, back to near 60 or better. Sunday, Monday, Tuesday, really nice stretch of weather here for most of the next seven days. Don't see much in the way of any big storm systems coming other than a little cool down there for tomorrow and then again on Saturday. That's really about all we can throw a fit about in our seven day forecast. Sure, you can get a premium steak at a steakhouse. No surprise there. But real petite filet steak sandwiches at an Arby's house? Surprise there. Arby's, we have the meat. Are you ready to join the celebration? Then what are you waiting for? Switch to Viero today and find out exactly why we're better. More towers than the competition. Convenient stores in your neighborhood. Friendly, helpful customer service. And top phones at excellent values, such as the iPhone XR for free. That's right, get a free iPhone XR when you purchase any other iPhone of equal or greater value. Viera Wireless, your better choice for wireless service. At Elite Physical Therapy, we provide preventative and rehabilitative treatments that maximize function and promote well-being for patients of all ages. With two locations in Scottsbluff and Gearing, we offer the convenience of you choosing your location with the same great services no matter where you go. Stop into one of our locations today in Scotts Bluff at 214 West 27th Street or in Gearing at 10th and M Street and see what Elite Physical Therapy can do for you. Treatment you need and care you deserve. In life, some things just go together, like a burger and fries, and home and auto insurance from State Farm. So make it a combo. Combining your home and auto insurance could save you time and money. And who doesn't like that? Just call State Farm agent Kerr Heilbrunn and find out how you can start saving today. It's just another way. We're here to help life go right. Welcome back. The United Way of Western Nebraska is pleased to announce the recent award of a very generous $10,000 local needs grant from the Union Pacific Foundation. The foundation's mission is to improve the quality of life in the communities they serve and where their employees live and work. The majority of these grants are intended to help nonprofit organizations build their capacity, increase their impact, and operate more effectively. Well, the Keystone Pipeline has resume, resumed moving Canadian crude oil nearly two weeks after it leaked an estimated 383 gallons in North Dakota. TC Energy says the pipeline returns to service on Sunday after approval of a repair and restart plan by the U.S. Pipeline and Hazardous Materials Safety Administration. State regulators say that the leak was reported on October 29th and the cause of the leak has not been disclosed. And Nebraska's rural areas are struggling with a shortage of high-speed internet and consumers who live there are likely paying more for service than their urban counterparts. A new report by the state's Rural Broadband Task Force says just 63% of rural Nebraskans have access to fixed high-speed broadband service that allows users to watch high-definition movies, 
use vid video chat services, and download large data files. Most other rural areas have internet access, but at much lower speeds and with fewer providers to compete and drive down prices. Some remote corners of Nebraska still have no fixed service, forcing residents to use less reliable satellite-based internet or their cell phones. Well, straight ahead, Shabella Guzman will be in with the check-in on Ag News. She'll have that right after this on KNEB.TV News. Winter is upon us, and while safety is an important consideration all year long, there are some auto maintenance and safety checks that are specific to winter driving. To be sure you don't end up a road popsicle, take your vehicle to High Tech Auto and let Terry's team help you get an upper hand on Old Man Winter. Renewal by Anderson, proud of what we do. At Renewal by Anderson, we are a local family business. Everyone from our office and project management teams to the best installers anywhere works with our owner, Andy Stelflu, to give our clients a red carpet experience every day. We're proud to carry the best windows and patio doors for sure, but most of all, we're proud to help our clients improve their lives at home with a great investment. Contact us today. We'd be proud to earn your business. Renewal by Anderson, proud of what we do. You said yes. Together, you planned every detail. You married. And then you realized 500 square feet just isn't enough room for two. When life happens, find a home that fits. First National Bank North Platte. Start your mortgage pre-approval today. You decide to add another to your family. You start reading parenting books. You're amazed that such a small human could need so much space. When life happens, find a home that fits. First National Bank North Platte. Start your mortgage pre-approval today. This is KNEB TV Ag News from the First National Bank Ag Desk. First National Bank of North Platte, the bank to think of first. The University of Nebraska priority candidate to serve as Nebraska University's next president, Walter Carter, Jr., Vice Admiral, retired, stopped in Scotts Bluff on Tuesday to meet members of the community at the UNL Panhandle Research and Extension Center. Carter said the university's extension centers bring the university to the people across the state. To uh, uh, technology uh, and looking at uh, uh, what they can do to provide a better life for those that you know tend the land and tend livestock. Uh, so that type of uh, uh, development, that investment in time, and the data that it produces is being used by well over 75 percent of the farmers and, and for those that are in livestock I learned today that about 80 to 85 and that 5 percent of them are using that uh, data that comes out of uh, these extension centers today. It's very exciting to know that that quick return on investment uh, is so relevant. Carter said he's been familiarizing himself with agriculture and the state by visiting different communities and the industries in those communities. In North Platte where he saw 80,000 head of cattle at a feedlot he said to him as a Navy guy, it was like a sea of cattle. He also visited the extension feedlot in Scotts Bluff. So I was, uh, again, really impressed by uh, what's happening there with the 1,100 uh, head of cattle and what they're doing with you know, laying uh, spent coal down to uh, work on uh, trying to figure out how to retain the nitrates that you know, come from the, uh, the compost uh, and some of the other experimentation that's going on there that can immediately return to those that raise cattle. Uh, and I think uh, if you could take that concept and move it even to some of the larger feedlots so they can do the experimentation on site, uh, that could even be more impactful. So there's a lot of goodness there. Earlier, Carter visited Columbus, Norfolk, and Fremont, bringing to a close a statewide vetting tour. He was named the priority candidate for president by a unanimous vote of the Board of Regents at its October 25th meeting. His appointment is now subject to a 30-day public review period before the board could consider naming him president-elect. In Scotts Bluff, I'm Shabella Guzman with KNEB.TV News. For the card-carrying fan, get your Husker Visa debit card so you can take the game with you. Free with first free checking.
When it comes to helping local folks with the loans and financial advice they need, we don't horse around. Our only goal is to help you and your family achieve your financial goals with the right loans and savings products. So if you want to bank with people that care about you and your financial needs, stop by or give us a call. First State Bank. We're big on you. Member FDIC. Online at fsbcentral.com. Well, let's take a look what's happening on today's community calendar. That's a look at today's community calendar brought to you by First State Bank, honoring those who give back. Nominate your community champion at fsbcentral.com. Fox Butte General Hospital continues our mission to lead and innovate in healthcare delivery and community wellness. But this isn't just a hospital. This is home to exceptional patient care. This is the greatest place to work, receive care, and practice medicine. This is innovation in action. This is community wellness. This is where specialty clinics fit your needs. This is where a friendly smile, a warm hand, and an empathetic ear exist to care for you. We are Box Butte General Hospital. This is us. Great things are happening here since 1976. Are you looking for the perfect place to hold a wedding, family reunion, holiday office party, or business meeting? Well, look no further. The Hampton Inn and Suites Hotel and Conference Center is just the place for you. We're a full-service banquet facility that can host up to 400 of your guests. Stop in and see our spacious open concept meeting rooms and begin planning your special event or family gathering today. Let us do the work for you so you can enjoy your guests. For personal service, stop by the Hampton Inn and Suites front desk local lending. We're here for you from start to finish. Keeping money in our economy. Supporting local jobs. Giving back to our community. Investing in entrepreneurship. Making our quiet towns a destination. At Platte Valley Bank, we support local because we are local. And finally tonight, the Scottsdale County Sheriff's Department has released more information about the woman who died after her car left the roadway and ended up in a ravine east of Lyman. Sheriff Mark Overman says his office received a report around 9 a.m. yesterday of a Lyman woman who had been missing since leaving work at Morrill around 10 p.m. Sunday. Overman says deputies were searching for hours, with investigators eventually learning that the woman did reach out for help after the accident that she had sent a text message to a roommate sometime in the early morning. 
saying that she'd wrecked her car and she was in a swamp. So uh, we spent a lot of investigative time today uh, getting with uh, cellular telephone companies. We had to get with two different ones and, uh, and got some parameters up on where she might be. The Airlink helicopter was able to spot the vehicle in a ravine just west of the intersection of Lyman Road and County Road 6, apparently having went off the road before snow fell overnight. The 59-year-old woman has still not yet been identified as of broadcast time. Overman says his department is awaiting autopsy results to determine the official cause of death. Well, that does it for us this time. Thank you so much for tuning in. We'll see you here next time.